All right, so there is a feature in Lightroom 4 beta um, that, that when, when I heard about it, I knew I was going to use it. I, I knew I liked it, and I could see that even if I wasn't going to use it all the time, I could see it being very useful to people. Um, on, I was traveling out to California last week, and I really realized where I am going to use this feature a lot. So let, let me tell you what the feature is, and then I'll kind of explain where I thought I was going to use it and where I find myself using it more now. And the feature is in the adjustment brush, and also the graduated filter because they both basically have the same settings. In the adjustment brush and graduated filter, what they've done is they've added white balance. So now you can paint white balance changes or use a graduated filter and get white balance changes onto parts of an image. Okay, so where is this useful? Um, I think it's useful for you know people that might be shooting indoors, outdoors. It can happen in both places, but if you've got people standing under different light, okay? So for example, if maybe you're shooting a football game outside and you have a couple of players that might be in the shade and then a couple of players that might be in the sun, um, what, what's gonna happen is the, their, those temperatures are gonna differ, okay? So you, when you adjust white balance here in the basic panel, you kinda have to pick which way you're gonna go. Are you gonna warm up the photo? Are you gonna cool it down? Whichever one you do, the people that were already warm or already cool are gonna get more so and whatever you're trying to counteract in the other people. So I think that's why they added that feature in there was so that we could, we could account for differing white balances um, across an image with different light sources now or different light. Now, where I found over the last week where I started using this a lot and I realized that I, I've always had this problem, I just never really knew how to solve it um, without going into Photoshop, was take an image like this, for example. So I'm gonna switch over to as shot. Okay, this is my white balance as shot. So as I look at creatively, which is pretty much what white balance is for, for travel and landscape photos. As I look at this, it, you kind of have to make a decision, right? I can see that the blue sky kind of has some some warmth to it okay it's kind of got some yellow and i i would want to counteract that because when i was there and it just at least when i'm standing in in these places and i'm looking even during sunrise and sunset i look around and the sky still feels very has a very crisp blue look to it except for when it starts to get really close to where the sun happens to be so my first inclination is come over here and go to temperature and i can kind of move that over toward the cooler side but that, of course, cools the entire photo, okay? And look at what it's done down here. What I really liked was basically from the horizon line down, I really like that warmth, okay? I like that warmth that I get in those areas. But when I cool the photo down to try to get the blue sky to be bluer, what happens is, is I lose the warmth in those areas. That's where this setting comes in really handy, and it's, it's not something that I originally thought about. So rather than brushing it on, which you can do, of course. What I would do is take my graduated filter and I come over here to the default is gonna obviously be at zero. I take it and I crank it, crank it over toward the warm side, okay? And I'm just gonna drag from the bottom and drag upward and even drag upward into the sky because I know that the, the, the sky starts to get warmer in certain places. So I'm okay with that. I just kinda, as it starts to get toward blue, I just wanted to make it more blue. Okay, so take a look at the difference here. I'm going to turn the toggle switch off. In fact, let's let's change the pin to. Um, I'm going to just hide it for now because we're not using it. And I'm going to turn the toggle switch on and off. Take a look. Before, after. Before, after. See the difference? And I can yeah. I don't know if I'm going to go too too much higher with it, but you get the idea. Now, that's before it has a very very cool look to it. That's because I moved the white balance slider toward the cool side, the temperature slider toward the cool side in the basic panel, which cooled the entire photo. Now with this, I'm able to actually come inside here and I'm able to warm up the areas that were warm that I kind of liked to begin with, okay? And all this, this is, you know, how do you know, this is a very creative choice, okay? There's no, there's no set thing that I can tell you, especially when it comes to landscape and travel. I mean, you can click on a white point and you can set your white balance. It doesn't mean it's right. Okay, that just means it's technically right, but how does it look? How does it feel to you? And that's really the most important part here. All right, uh, real quick, let's, let me, I'll just show you one more example here. Okay, here's another example. Take a look at the sky. Now, we've got some warmth up here. 
but it, it also goes toward that deeper blue area up toward the top. So I'm gonna go back here. Let's go to, let's change back it out of my graduated filter. I'm gonna change to as shot. Okay, so this is the white balance as shot. And so if I decided to cool it, look at what happens. Okay, so I'm able to get some more of that blue blue color in the sky, but I lose all that golden color that was up here in the foreground and down here toward the horizon line. And it could go the opposite way. Maybe you maybe you want to accentuate the warmth in the photo. So maybe you want to do something like this. All right, that's fine. But now your sky really becomes, even though you know it's, it's bluish up here toward the top, it starts to become yellow. So we've gone the opposite way. So again, I'll just take my adjustment, or not my adjustment brush, but my graduated filter, and now we'll move it toward the cooler side here. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go too far with it, but I'm just gonna drag it down. Okay, remember, here to here, it's pretty intense. Once it hits here, it really starts to graduate and smooth out. So I'll take this and I'll maybe move it up a little bit just to kind of keep it fairly natural. Again, let's take our toggle switch here before, after and maybe just dial it back just a little bit. I don't think I need to go quite that far with it. Again, before and then after. So it's a nice transition there. I can even extend that transition out more if you don't want it to be such a such a harsh line in between the two, before, after. And to me, that's really where I'm finding that I'm using these tools the most, okay? It's not something that I thought I was gonna do, but as I started work on these photos, I, I, I remember, you know, every time I work on landscape and, and travel photography, I remember that, I always am battling this problem. I'm always battling, well, I kind of want to do something in the sky, but I kind of like the warmth in the photo. Now, this is the way really to get the best of both worlds. All right, folks, well, I hope you enjoyed. My name is Matt Kaliskowski, and I will talk to you again very soon.